so it's been a minute um happy 2022 happy five days past halloween happy fall happy pre-christmas and there's a lot of things going on it's the holidays uh halloween has just kind of flown by it's insane how quickly i decorated and how quickly i am now going to undecorate for halloween i'm gonna do something i did last year um which was right after Halloween, I decided to do some fall decorating because I get so excited about Halloween. I usually start decorating in September, but I also really want to enjoy other holidays too. And sometimes I just really want to celebrate the season. So I want to get in the rest of fall while I can. And then once Thanksgiving hits, we'll probably dive right into like a wintry, Christmassy kind of vibe. I hope you guys did have a really good season so far as far as fall is concerned. I went to the drive-in, uh, went to Sleepy Hollow for a weekend with my wife. It was absolutely wonderful and eventually decorated. I think it was like two weeks into October before we finally were able to decorate. I think I wanna do something kind of similar to what I did last year. I brought out a bunch of owls. It was like, put a bird on it, except it was owls. I'm gonna kind of do the same thing, but I wanna bring out like a herbal apothecary aesthetic to the whole thing. Uh, lots of old books, lots of jars, bottles, bones, dried foliage that kind of thing so i am excited about that i did make a beverage i will leave a little recipe down for you in the description box it is a bourbon punch with ginger beer and apple cider and some cranberries i think there's a little bit of orange in there some apple some cinnamon leave a comment with some of your favorite fall slash winter transitionary seasonal cocktails so cheers to that and uh, hopefully we can come up with something kind of cool for behind us. And I say it's a mantle, it's not a mantle, it's a bookcase, or actually I think it's a storage case from Ikea. Okay, so let's get started on cleaning some of this up. I was gonna call it a mess, but it's really not. <laughs> um, but I was struggling a little bit here to just kind of figure out how I was gonna store these. Uh, it makes me kind of sad to have to watch all of this get packed away. Uh, don't worry, as you see here, it looks like it's a mess in this bin, but I am temporarily putting them in this bin so that I could get them out of my way and get to the good stuff. I don't know about y'all, but my least favorite part of all of this decorating is <laughs> having to put stuff in the bins. Um, because this is such a weird and transitional time, I'm actually gonna try to keep some of the decor pieces that I currently have, especially my jack-o'-lanterns, and just turn them around and use them that way. Same with a lot of my candles. I'm just gonna turn the jack-o'-lantern portions of them around and use them as regular candles. Here I am deciding whether or not I wanna keep or use that piece. <laughs> I uh, ended up using it, but not in the way that I thought I would. You'll notice that in and on some of these, I use like a sticky tack or a museum wax. Uh, there I am waving. But yeah, I highly recommend using museum wax or sticky tack for any of your candlesticks or tall pillars. Okay, so I have cleaned everything off. I have pulled some of the uh, decor pieces that I plan to continue to use, um, which is actually quite a few. I'm gonna just take a lot of these pumpkins and turn them around or these jack-o'-lanterns and turn them around and just use them that way. But ultimately I am going to use a lot of stuff from around the house too. So 
let me grab some stuff. Let me pull some stuff. I'll show you kind of what I've got going on. So our current pile kind of looks like this right now. This is the stuff that I pulled off of the mantle that I may or may not use. Yeah, I will um, try to conjure up some sort of plan here in a minute. Okay, so this is actually a pressed leaf book that we found when we were thrifting. I would say we've had it for a significant period of time, but it works perfectly to cover the uh, cord for the TV. That is a cauldron, but it has a jack-o'-lantern on the other side. I figured it would look really cool and very vintage-y up there amongst everything else that we're gonna try to put up here. You're gonna notice I'll put a lot of things up here. I'm gonna ultimately end up taking a lot of this stuff down or restructuring or reorganizing it. On the right, we have a goat skull. On the left, we have a coyote skull. All of the bones and everything that are listed or showing up here are all ethically sourced. But I will tell you where I found some of this stuff or um, where we ended up thrifting it or what we found versus what we purchased. This is my little feather pin that we got from Salem when we went to Salem last year. We went to uh, Why Not's Wands and I was able to get a feather pin and some feather ink. I got this glass cloche from Ikea. They still have them. They're amazing. I want to say this vertebrae my wife found by the railroad tracks. <laughs> so, which is why it still looks pretty dingy and grimy. We have not tried to bleach it or anything. It's been frozen and there's no critters in there. We've had it for a significant amount of time. I thought it looked really cool under the cloche and more like a specimen piece. You're going to see a couple of these floating around. There are dried leaves, dried flowers, littler bones, uh, and maybe even some crystals in there. I think I got it from a kit that a small seller on Etsy actually sends out as like a mystery kit. Pretty easy to make yourself. I also have tons of little teeny tiny owls that I'm going to put out as well as other actual specimens like this beetle. There's a couple of other little bottles. There's one wax bottle that I recently just put out. I got that off of a candle from Moon Lore Apothecary, which you may have seen in one of my previous videos. A tea pin, a, a tea tin, I can't talk. A candle, a pumpkin candle, a beaver jaw. And uh, you will see a raccoon paw up there. Again, all of these are ethically sourced. That is a, a muskrat jaw. If I'm not mistaken. And a couple of candle holders, a snake candle holder, which I actually got off of eBay. These are railroad spikes. A lot of the time, if you go walking near railroads, you will see random spikes kind of just floating around out there. That's where you can pick them up. Go on a hike. Go look at cool stuff that's on the ground. A lot of the stuff that you see in that jar right there are actually like feathers and stuff from giveaway baskets or stuff that was just kind of found during our walks. So uh, you can find a lot of bottles at Dollar Tree, which is actually where I think this bottle came from. And you'll see, I was kind of putting everything up there at first, uh, and now I'm really trying to find a way to decorate. You'll notice I have a tendency to go really matchy matchy and then I get really upset with myself because I know that I want it to look a lot more organic. That was a kombucha bottle. I just took the label off of and thought it was a really pretty brown slash amber bottle. And these are just a couple of pillar candles that I had laying around the house. They're really old. Uh, you can tell because they have already even kind of like broken and crumbled a bit. The little woven basket Thing is actually a single wick candle holder from Bath and Body Works from this past year. And then of course the pumpkins are the Target pumpkins that I think they still have every year. I just turned them around so you can't see the jack-o'-lantern faces. Again, you can tell I'm starting to get a little matchy-matchy with all of the products that I'm putting up there. I think that's some sort of styrofoam uh, sparkly pumpkin from Michael's. A lot of things like that owl taper candle can be found when you thrift or at places like Tuesday morning or even like TJ Maxx or Marshalls will usually have them. Specimens and stuff like that are a little easier to find via Etsy 
or through eBay or things like that, you're gonna see this little tiny jar and it's got little white things and it's actually got deer teeth in it. Story time, I actually received that from my wife on our first Valentine's Day. And there is a little piece of birch bark that is in the top of the glass jar. And inside of it, it says, tooth be told, I have the moss excellent time with you. Very cute. Probably one of the most um, thoughtful gifts I've ever received. And it is still one of the things that I put on display very regularly because it is beautiful. It's just two deer teeth in with moss. It's like a little terrarium. It's gorgeous. These little pumpkins also came from Target. They came in like a big pack. I have a ton of them in different colors all over the place. The orange candle came from TJ Maxx two years ago. But I really love that cloche and I totally wanted to put it up on uh, the top of what I'm going to call from here on out the mantle because that's the best thing I have to describe it even though that's totally not what it is. It's a storage unit. Um, I also, and you'll see I think in just a moment here that I have... There's some little teeny tiny pumpkins. Those are actually LED light pumpkins. I got those from Target this year. But you're going to see some old pictures that I got from thrifting as well. They get, they're get they kind of spooky. I love them. That's the thing I was telling you about that I got off my Moonlar Apothecary candle. Some feather pin ink to go with my feather pin. Just these final little touches, these little details that I wanted to add in. Little owls and stuff. You know the deal. More owls. Told you to put an owl on it. That's me. Some painted jars. Creepy old people. More little owls. Okay, a uh, quick rundown of where we are so far and what I'm happy with and what I'm not happy with. So, if I can hold the camera, I like the cauldron. I like the book in the back. I was trying two different variations on the candlestick with like a pumpkin on it and I don't think I love those I think they're too high but what I do like are these little um like basket things they have lights in them so I would be very interested in seeing what that looks like um all lit up I've got some extra like baubles and stuff I did put a ton of stuff up here because I just had to organize it and get it out of the way but I'm seeing some stuff that's like a little too matchy matchy there's way too many things that are way too low I need some books I need some elevation and I need some moss. I definitely need some like flowers and dried leaves and plants and stuff. So we'll get back at this tomorrow and see what we can come up with. But I have some ideas. Keep your fingers crossed. Okie dokie. We're back for day two. And I have come to the realization that I don't like any of this. And that's okay. There are like little things that I like. But ultimately there is not enough height for all of this little stuff that's just hanging around at the bottom. There I am, I'm saying hello. You can also tell that I found a couple of other little cutesy things around the house towards the end of the day that I was like, yo, I might want to actually use that stuff. So I grabbed it. And now here comes the restructure. And I'm okay with it. I'm fine with it. You know, genius takes time, as they say. You know, practice also makes perfect. Uh, hopefully I don't break anything in the process. Uh, spoiler alert, I did not, which is good. But... I do need to take down the majority of this in order to come up with a better solution, which in my opinion, spoiler, I think I did. Uh, one of the neat little tricks that I have found is if you have cool old books where you're, it looks like I broke that, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm just knocking a lot of stuff over. But like I was saying, if you have cool old books that have really cool pages in them or different color pages in them, Display them with the pages out. And then that way they look more uniform too. And there's not a ton of titling that's going on and distracting you from the rest of your decor. I figured with the books, I could toss the skulls on there and it would give them a more studious, dark academia, harvesty kind of feel. I think my ultimate plan here was to make it look like a witch's display table with a bunch of apothecary books, jars, potions, and other various things that she may or may not use in order to do her spells. 
And yeah, that seems a little on the uh, Halloween-y side, but I feel like ultimately this is going to have a very Harvest vibe. I uh, think like Harvest Witch, I guess that's the best way for me to describe it. You'll notice that I am kind of taking the liberty of the weird V-shaped rule that I've heard a lot about when it comes to interior decorating or at least like displaying. And that is that you either decorate in a triangle, so top tier in the middle, and then it goes down on either side or a reverse triangle where it's down low in the middle and goes up on either side. That is definitely some of the method to my madness, but it's not something that I'm really taking into consideration. I am much more a visual person and what seems to look good next to each other uh, without being too terribly matchy-matchy. Super excited to be able to use my harvester or my scythe. And I think it's going to look really cool up here. I typically have it um, displayed somewhere else in my house, but I'm, it's nice to be able to put it front and center, uh, like kind of directly as soon as you walk in the house or as soon as you're in the living room. So just pulling some additional stuff down from the left hand side, because I feel like I've really got the right hand side on lock. Um, I do not recommend, oh, maracas. You can't hear them though. Oh, hello, wife. I do recommend going from kind of both sides at the same time so that you can evenly display things. But I was struggling with that and got really excited with working on just the one side. So I ended up working on one side, then the other. I have this giant book of Poe writings that an old roommate left behind and I kept some Aldous Huxley, some additional old books. All of this stuff was thrifted, including the scythe. I got really lucky there. Went to this old antique farm, basically, out in the middle of nowhere in North Carolina and got very lucky I was able to find one of those. They're not easy to find at all, but it was like a holy grail antique item for me and I was very excited to find it. And our little uh, lucky raccoon foot. Actually, there used to be an air plant in that little wooden piece and I'm not saying I don't have a green thumb because I, we have a lot of plants and they're actually all alive, <laughs> but that air plant died. Uh, I don't know how you kill air plants, but I managed to do so. However, those little yellow flowers are not real. Those are fake, but I really do like the organicness of that clear vase that they are in. Like I said, you're going to see some of these little vial jars with the little mini bones and dried plants and crystals and stuff in them. I really enjoy those we kind of have them all over the house. You're probably also going to see me move things around 50,000 times because I'm not going to like where they're sitting. I don't love the fact right now that I have two birds sitting right next to each other on that left hand side, but I think I am more focused on where that candle's going to sit. And I know eventually I'm going to move them. I think ultimately also just kind of recognizing that there is going to need to be light on this mantle kind of as I go through it is something that I'm taking into consideration as I place stuff. So some of these candles are like battery operated and will light themselves. I will probably add some additional lighting too in the way of more fairy lights or maybe even some puck lights. I think that lighting is crucial to a really cool display, especially if you're trying to decorate for like a specific season or something like that. You'll see a few of these little creepy photos, these vintage photos, kind of pop up here and there. I think I ultimately choose not to utilize her. And the thing that I'm trying to hold her up on is actually an old rusty spring that I found on the ground. So, you know, um, I want to say you're going to see a few bones here. I actually got from like Facebook oddities groups. If you ever decide to attempt to purchase bones, make sure that whoever the seller is, um, is obtaining them as ethically as possible. Here I am saying hi, getting distracted by other people in my home, and starting to work on all the little cubes. So here is one of our little uh, owls. He has a little chip in his nose, just as my cube has a lot of chips in its paint. I'm going to try to stylize this a couple of different ways. I think I've recognized that this particular pillar candle is a little too intense. So I went with something that was a little bit more chill. 
I got this absinthe and black fig candle from Why Not's Wands in Salem last year. I try not to burn it because I love it so much. So here's a tip that I can give you in regards to trying to hide something that kind of has to be there. Like say you've got like a cable console or in this case a PlayStation that you kind of need to utilize but want to hide if you're trying to display stuff. My goal here was to make this as obscured and kind of blended in as much as I possibly could. So I just used a black pumpkin and a couple of extra little pumpkins on the side to kind of hide where our controllers go and mask the fact that there is a black PlayStation that is kind of sitting in that cube. I told you guys that one of my favorite things was this cloche with the vertebrae in it. So I wanted to make that a mainstay and I realized that by putting it on the top part of the mantle, I wasn't going to be able to see it as well. So I figured it would be a good thing to put in one of the cubes, especially towards the top, since that's kind of where my eye gravitates when I look at stuff. You'll see I have a uh, Speak No Evil version of the owl as well, and I'm kind of trying to keep the displays next to those pretty simple, but also kind of similar to the one that's on the opposite side. Uh, that's another thing that I was doing. These are evenly spaced or even cubes. So there's four cubes on top, four cubes on the bottom. So I chose to do two of the owls on the top, one on the far left, one on the far right. And then I put another one on the bottom and I put it in the cube second to the right. But either one of the ones in the middle would have worked. I felt like because of the PlayStation being in the top second one that it made the most sense to do it this way. Again, these are really simple. I don't want to put a ton in the cubes. I want them to be little vignettes, little display pieces for things. This little notebook notepad that's in the back we got from an antique store in Sleepy Hollow. Um, and the drawings were all from the 60s. It was a really cool piece. I highly, highly recommend going to the little antique shop that's kind of right off of, um, like right in the middle of downtown Terrytown. I think that they have some really cool pieces although they might be a little on the expensive side. My mommy got me this Ocean Blend uh, tea tin, which I absolutely love. And there is our See No Evil owl. <laughs> and these little apothecary jars with the twine on them, I think were from the Dollar Tree like 10 years ago. So can't recommend Dollar Tree enough when it comes to some of these tinier little decorative trinkets. Yes, that is the Raven candle holder from Bath & Body Works from this past year. It is one of the few things that I actually did purchase. Yes, that is the Jersey Devil from DIY or Die Number 1. Uh, if you want to learn how to make that, please make sure that you visit this. I'll put the link up here in the top. So check out that video and you'll learn how to make, make this. There's even a blog post. I'll add that into the description box. These are the, actually the jaws from the goat skull that's on the top of the mantle. These little keys I think came from TJ Maxx. And again, just kind of displaying the books because the spines aren't necessarily really pretty, but the pages are a little on the dingier side and I thought they looked pretty neat. And some older photos. I think I got that one off of eBay. And a little palmistry thing. I think that's from Amazon and it came with a little booklet. And here I am, I'm just going to do the final touches of moss kind of everywhere. This is what, this is like, trust the process all the way up until this point. You put this stuff in, this is the filler that is really going to make this thing sing. I love the little gourd bird is one of my favorites. Speaking of gourds, I'm going to make some dinner for you. Here is our golden gourd. It's like a tiny little pumpkin. I'm just going to go ahead and scoop the seeds out. Brown out some, brown out, <laughs> brown up some sausage and some onions. Add some apples. You can hear them sizzling. Maybe my wife doot dooting in the background with her saxophone. Some thyme. It's all ready to go. It's going to be our stuffing. Add that into our roasted squash. And here's the finished product. So I'll send you out with some music and some close-up shots.
And we are finally going to sit down, drink our maple old fashions, and eat our sausage and apple stuffed golden acorn squashes while we watch a movie. Now, if anybody can guess what this movie is, make sure you leave a comment down in the comment section below. Shockingly enough, this is the first time I've seen this entire series. It's 2022. I cannot believe this. Who am I? Either way, uh, I hope you had fun. Make sure that you uh, like this video if you liked it. Subscribe if you had fun. And uh, yeah, we will be seeing you here real soon for maybe another DIY or die. Anyway, see you later, guys. Bye.